Welcome to Clone Questions Live AM Edition, Morning Edition, Episode 34. We're on Episode 34 already. We are live on Instagram. Let me turn that light down a little bit. Got that a little red there. We're doing Morning Editions now. Uh, every Friday morning, we do our normal Clone Questions Lives, 5.30 Pacific Center Time in the evening. But we're also doing morning editions for anybody in uh, different area codes, different zip codes, things like that. Just want to join as well. You also get to join me in my morning coffee and my morning joint. So welcome to everybody joining. I'm just getting prepared here, getting some stuff grinded up. Let me know where you're joining in from. Everybody in the chat here. Good morning. Good morning. Hopefully it's morning for you. Where are you guys joining in from? Let me, uh, gotta get to roll in this joint here. Where are we at there? Is that Argent Argentina? Gonzalez? Colombia? See? That's the, uh, that's the morning edition, uh, Clone Questions Live at work. We got people from other countries, different time zones, able to join in without having to stay up super late. We got, uh, some people that are up. In the middle of the morning, trying to join, trying to join uh, the lives. Are you joining from? Questions. Let me uh, enter a little chat here. Clone Coach T. Enter a little text there let me pin that comment so everybody joining let me know where you're joining in from we got argentina colombia virginia looks like we got france nice via de leiva leiva where's that diego a pinzon la rota via de leiva where's that at we got new york southern oregon Y para todos los que hablan español, si no saben, los, la guía que tengo mi, eh, que estoy ofreciendo, lo puedes agarrar en español también. So, lo tengo disponible en más de 10 lenguajes, incluyendo español, tres versiones de español, una versión de uh, español de México, Español de Sudamérica y Español de España, o como dicen España. So, hay casi 12, 12 lenguajes diferentes. El que hable the French, you out in France? I think I have a French version of the SOPs as well. But I definitely have uh, like 12, I think even more different languages available for you at clonecoach.com. Let me know where you're joining in from. If you're going to puff on something, I'm just getting ready here. Just getting ready here. Buenos dias. Good morning to everybody. Let me catch up on this chat here. We got Southern Oregon. Nice. Ohio. Wish for good luck in November. What's going on in November? Oh, uh, you guys voting again in Ohio out there? I remember the... Uh, the last one was a, a shamble, a scam, never really uh, amounted to anything. So it's glad to hear that you guys are going to be voting for some for more uh, legalization, decriminalization, a market out there in Ohio. I don't know the exact, you know, thing you guys are voting on, what the uh, what those laws are going to entail. But. Shout out to Toledo Indoor Garden out there in Ohio, in Toledo, Ohio. Super cool folk. I did a um, a live in-person workshop out there for them, which they invited me to. And they're super hospitable people. So if you guys are out there in the Ohio area, check out Toledo Indoor Garden. Tell them Clone Coach sent you. Diego Apinzon says, that's in Colombia. Via de Leiva está en Colombia. De qué parte? He said, Via de Leiva is a beautiful town in Colombia. 
Nice. Good morning, Gene Supreme. <coughs> what do they call this? They call this the, uh, <coughs> the hippie breakfast. Is that what they call this? The hippie breakfast? Coffee and a joint? Who else... Who else starts the morning off with a coffee and a joint? Let me know in the chat. Who else starts the morning off with a coffee and a joint? We got Portland in the house, Southeast Michigan. Craig's a G. Yes, he is. Craig and the whole family out there. Everybody's fucking fantastic, dude. I... It was uh, such a, such an awesome experience to go hang out with them, and um, you know they're super hospitable, they're super nice, they're 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 fucking on it, dude, and uh, they're killing it out there. Shout out to them. It's Nike TV is vote yeah voting for legalization in November in Ohio. What is uh what is their legalization plan going to look like? Is it going to be like the uh, the one license holder or whatever it was the first time around, like or is it going to be like a real a real market, a real market out there. Like, do is it like states rights and as long as you get a state application, like your money, like like Oklahoma, or do you have to have like a, a local approval prior to the state approval, like California, which is a pain in the ass because then all the local counties make up their own rules, and then within those counties, all the cities make up their own rules. So you have up to three layers of approval that you need to get through to operate in California. So hopefully it's not like that out there. Kenneth Clovis, what's up, man? Shout out to you. I remember meeting you out in um, MJ BizCon and uh, got to got to chat with you for a little bit to shout out. I see you're making moves out there, doing things. So keep killing it. It says Breakfast of Champions. Gene Supreme says Breakfast of Champions. Use that shite. Says coffee and a blunt here. Hippie Speedball. Is that what it's called? Hippie Speedball? Sounds more intense. <laughs> I don't know, like a hippie breakfast would, would do it, but. Yerba Mate and a doobie. What's, what's up with the Yerba Mate? I mean, I've seen it. I've heard of it. I mean, I've had it a couple times, but is it like. Is it like a true coffee replacement? Like, are you, is there caffeine in there? Is it, is there sugar? Like what's, what's going on in that? Do you make it yourself? Do you just buy the canned stuff? Do you, is, is it like a powder that you brew? Like, tell me more about that morning dew, Canna. Use that shite says. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> It shit's like real chemi and it hits it hits good. Uh, use that straight. It says absolutely every morning out in San Diego. I used to live out in uh, Mira Mesa, San Diego for a few years. In my previous career, prior to quitting that career and uh, joining the cannabis industry, um, I lived out in Mira Mesa for a while, which is pretty cool. Justin Williams says half a blunt and I'm ready to go. I haven't smoked blunts in years, probably a decade. Um, I remember being like community college. I used to smoke blunts uh, back 20, 2008, nine, something like that. Um, but I'm, I stick with joints now. I don't know if I hit, I hit a blunt. Like it's, it's like, it's like hitting a cigarette. It's like that tobacco, like really fucking hits me in the back of the throat. Like shit, you're smoking something different now. <laughs> like, I don't know. It's uh, hits it hits me hits me it's just because I don't smoke you know tobacco or blunts so. But happy Friday everybody! Happy Friday! This is the second edition of the second morning edition of Clone Questions Live. Hopefully, getting those people in different time zones like Colombia, Argentina. We got France. Um, I know I got some fans out in Israel that really inspired me to do this because they were staying up till like three, four in the morning or something like that to catch my lives. And I'm like, that's insane. <laughs> like, like the dedication's insane. So I was like, the least I could do is is hop on in the morning. 
let's see here. It's Nike TV says that's how they have it now, really, for the med side. You have to go through local municipality first, then state. Have to imagine we'll carry that. We'll carry over to rec. Yeah. Let's see here. Happy Friday. Cheers, everybody. High caffeine tea. And what is that little emoji? I don't know what that emoji. X prodigy. What is that emoji there? It's hard to tell. Use that shite says, fuck yeah, bro. I grew up in Scripps Ranch. What's up, neighbor? Yeah, that was like right, that's like right behind uh, Mira Mesa, right? Like right above the 56 or the 52, whatever was like above that mountain range. Right in like on the north side of Mira Mesa is like that mountain range. Or was it to the east? I don't know. But uh, yeah, I spent a few years out there in my early 20s when I was in my previous career with a company called Ecolab. And uh, I used to I used to service um, the wear washing, commercial laundry, and housekeeping, dispensing equipment, and machines and chemicals uh, for the cruise ships. So I was based out of San Diego, and I would service the ships at the port of San Diego. And most of the time, I was commuting up to San Pedro and Long Beach to service those ships. And the other half of the time was traveling to different ports, you know, all over the world, servicing the cruise ships there. But I was based out of San Diego. But I was renting a room, you know, I found the room, I got the job, you know, I was living out here in the desert, um, got the job, had to find somewhere to live, rented a room on Craigslist. Uh, so I had a couple of roommates, but I didn't have, and I was traveling all the time too. So I didn't have the ability to, to, uh, to grow any plants. You know, I was never there for more than a month and change to, to, you know, monitor a, a, a garden and had roommates and, you know, early twenties are partying, people coming and shit. So still didn't have the chance to grow. So once I finally um, moved back to the desert and was able to secure a place, then I was able to grow. And then that led me to replacing my salary with the grow. And once that hit, I, I, I quit, I quit the job, quit the career and just started growing full time. Let me catch up on this chat here. Uh, oh, see, this is from the stories. Yeah. I put up a little story about a, a little, Design for a podcast, the Clone Coach podcast. So, I'm going to start off the Clone Coach podcast with essentially uploading all of my long form content um, in the audio version to the Clone Coach podcast, in addition to um, about 10 uh, interviews that I've recorded. Uh, that I do have, and I am uploading the visual, the, the video version to my YouTube channel. I'm going to be snagging the audio only out of that and uploading that to the podcast um, to start with so that you have the the same content right now in audio format. With that as the base, I'm going to keep adding to that uh, all the clone questions lives and any other video interviews that I do um, just to keep stacking up the audio versions of that content on the podcast. And ideally, you know, the real hopes and dreams are is that I am able to have a legit podcast and a place and location and, and guests coming through and interviews and like, you know, excuse me, the whole fucking nine. So got to start somewhere, got to, got to build out more content on different platforms. And, um, this is something I'm working on next and shout out to anybody who could tell me what this is. Oh, if they recognize it, what they know about this. Shout out to anybody. Let me know in the chat. Does anybody recognize that? Let's see here. Morning Dew Canna says 100 milli, 150 milligrams of caffeine in the cans, all certified organic too. Oh, the caffeine feels a little different from coffee in my opinion. I've been on these instead of coffee for a while. So if it's... The same, if not more, caffeine. What are the other benefits to switching? We got Malta in the house. Malta. Zeus, 16. Malta. I think I stopped there when I did a cruise, like in the Mediterranean, with my previous career. I think I stopped at Malta. Is there a, is there a big port and a lot of cruise ships come to Malta? Because if so, I, I'm pretty sure I stopped there. 
Let's see here. Let me catch up on this chat. Rockstar707 says, yo, yo, advanced cultivators in the house. Welcome, welcome. He's not. Uh, use the shite says, nah, you were thinking of PQ. Uh, yeah, we were just east of you. Yeah, yeah, there it is. Hell yeah. Yeah, shout out to uh, to San Diego. Fun times. Fun times, good times. But, um, I mean, in my previous career with, with Ecolab traveling everywhere, I was traveling in like different countries, you know, Puerto Rico. I did I did a few few stints out in Europe, you know, some of the not so glamorous places like shipyards in the middle of Germany, you know, because that's where the dry docks were. And that's where we had to go do installs and stuff like that on the cruise ships. Um, but some were cooler, like, you know, Mediterranean cruise. And we had to work on the ship while I did the cruise to the Mediterranean. Uh, so, you know, a few different places, but everywhere I went. You know, Canada, Puerto Rico, you know, uh, Germany, everywhere I went, I was like seven out of 10 of like scoring weed at all the, uh, wherever I was. I would always look for it if I could. If my managers went around, I'd go, I'd go find some fucking herb and, and, you know, get my smoke in no matter where, where I was in the world, you know. Zeus, yeah, says... But yeah, it's a little island in the Mediterranean. Yeah, I stopped there. Um, and you know how it is with the cruise ships. You know, when you say you... I don't like to say I've been there because it's not like all of these destinations or, or stops you get to spend a night in or let alone a full day in. Sometimes it's a handful of hours. So you're able to visit, get off the ship, go have lunch, explore a little bit. Um, and then you got to hop on back the ship before it, before it takes off. But... You know, it's pretty cool, man, because that's it just takes me back, you know, to the to the early 20s. And, you know, seeing seeing Malta, a place where I visited in my early 20s, never think that I would. Um, and then now there's someone in Malta, you know, is tuning in to the live here. And we're, we're, you know, with Clone Coach and, you know, it's pretty fucking cool. But, yeah, guys, let's hear about your your gardens. What kind of gardens do you guys got going on? What's the market like where you're at? And is uh, and is anybody curious on that BOGO that I have listed there? It says buy one, get one free at clonecoach.com. Buy one, get one free, a BOGO, BOGO, BOGO. How? If you fill out on the homepage, clonecoach.com, if you fill out that overproduction calculator to see how much you could save every month by um, you know, increasing your success rates and, and becoming more efficient, You'll receive a follow-up email, and in that email, you're going to get a discount code so that you could get a, a, a BOGO discount code. This will allow you to really use it for a second language since there's up to 12 languages available uh, with the SOPs. If you have staff that speak Spanish or, or any other language that's available or yourself speaks that language and you want English as a secondary, whatever two languages you want to choose of the SOP, you can. You could buy one and get one free. And that second one, you could pick any other language that's available for you or your staff or wherever you're joining in from. So, you know, Los de, Los de Colombia, like I said earlier, there's uh, there's three different Spanish versions, a Mexican, a, a Spain, and a Latin America, um, and a bunch of other languages, too. So that's that buy one, get one free. You do that calculator. You're going to learn a little bit more about your nursery, see how much you could potentially be saving every, every single month, um, and you see how fast you can make your return on your purchase of the SOPs. Most people make it back on their very first batch, guys. Very first batch, people making their returns, all right? And after that, it's fucking all profit and gain for the rest of your career as long as you're making clones. Um, but yeah, that's the buy one, get one free. Fill out the calculator on the homepage. You'll get a follow-up email with the discount code. And you could use it to order a, any second language available on uh, clonecoach.com. Yeah, Gene Supreme. Yep, spot on with the Neighborhood Nursery mug. Being the old brand. You say lounge. It was just the, the dreams of a lounge, you know. The dreams of a lounge, I mean. Even just lounges in California have had such a, you know tough road to get to where they are now so like they're 
they're uh, it's been tough for them, you know. PNW Farmer, what's going on? Says, what's up, bud? And says, would would high pH affect roots to pop out? It's a very good question. Sorry for uh, Porter and Stout back there. They're the ones barking it up. Would high pH affect roots to come out? Yeah. Because improper pH range is always going to affect the uptake of nutrients and the the ability to, to mobilize, utilize, um, you know, different nutrients in your, in your plants and in the cells. So if the pH is off, things are not going to operate properly. Things are not going to be able to move freely and properly. So if, you know, what kind of high pH are you, are you talking about? Like above six, five, that's what I would kind of start to be like, Hey, that's, that's high pH, you know, above six, five is for sure. High pH in my eyes. Cause normally it's, it's hovering about 6.0 with cocoa or even less with rock wool, unless you're in soil, then that's normal for you. But um, PNW Farmer, what kind of uh, pH are you looking at that are affecting your roots and what kind of, uh, what's going on in the situation there? Zoo 16 says, it's just been legalized last two years. We can grow four plants at home for personal use. Nice. So, you know, you know what I'm really curious about with all of like with places like that where it's been decriminalized uh, for personal use and you can have, you know, four to six plants at home beyond seeds. Where do clones fit in? Clones are always the forgotten portion. The nursery is always a forgotten portion of any regulation, legalization, laws, reg- anything like that. So even this personal use beyond seeds, right? Because you could order seeds, I guess, and pop seeds. But where does propagation fit into the into the equation? Where does you know making where does asexual propagation come into the to the equation? Making clones, not just sexual propagation by germinating seeds. And if you could grow four plants at home, what are the rules on providing those four clones to every household? that you can from your four plants. Your four plants could make clones every single week, every two weeks if you cut all the, you know, normal, frequent, consistent basis. Those four plants can produce a lot of clones. So what's the rules on making clones and, and providing those? Because every household could have those four plants and but like where can they get them from? From another four plants would be the, you know, normal thought but like where does it lie in the rules where does it if you could have that personal use grow what about that personal use nursery to help other people have personal use grows right like if you could have four mother plants and you're cutting clones every week and you're providing these four to six clones to every household that you can that wants them that can grow them legally is that i mean is it the loophole i mean it usually is because nobody thinks of the nursery section and propagation um, when they're considering all these rules and laws, right? Which is good and bad. It's a forgotten, you know, you know, child, but, you know, so it's, it's good and bad because you'll, you could, it's kind of gray area. So you kind of like interpret the rules. Um, and if it doesn't di- in directly say you can't do something, well, indirectly you you know, it's kind of saying that you can, um, but then you're kind of always, you know, they're, they're always behind even more so on the knowledge base and what it takes to run a nursery and what it really means. And th- there's a big discrepancy there. So good and bad with like the, na- the the nursery always being forgotten about. But what do you guys think? What do you guys think? If you could have those four, four to six, you know, those home grow plants, instead of flowering them, because it's legal to flower them for personal use. What about propagating? For personal use and providing those plants to other people for their personal use i don't know that's just me what do you guys think justin williams is from michigan michigan and says one of the hardest markets to compete in inflated market with truly low profit margin no room for mistakes justin williams i'm curious because i've just 
spoken to a few people from Michigan. Well, in the, it, it, it sounds like it's the opposite from what I've heard because the people growing flour that I speak to out in Michigan are popping up more and more rooms and selling everything that they make. The people making clones and teens are saying there's, there's so much demand, not enough supply. They're getting premium prices for their live plants. So it seems to be like the market's moving. Like there's, there's good velocity in the market. It, oh shit. But, um, so I'm curious, you know, what, what your, your kind of take is it, um, how you see that or, or what, what the truth is to that or what, you know, I'm kind of curious. Cha- Chance Dunbar says, I've had success rates with pH of 6.8 to 7. <laughs> Woo. That's up there. You know, you've had success probably, you know, but I guarantee you, you didn't have like a solid green clone. There's, there's going to be some sort of deficiency and a lack of uptake of certain nutrients because things don't get absorbed at that high level. Not everything gets absorbed at that high level at the proper rates and stuff. So once again, once again, uh, like there's three perfect, there's three things to a perfect clone. I made a video on the clone coach homepage. Um, it's a six minute video it goes over the three things that, you know, make a perfect clone and roots is one of them, but it's not everything. There's, a, there's other parts to a perfect clone. So check that out on clonecoach.com six minute video. If you haven't checked it out, take it, you know, watch it on your, on your 10 minute break on your, on your, on the toilet, um, while you're eating, while you're smoking a joint, clonecoach.com is on the homepage, six minutes to a, to perfect clones. Jaboard one says, yeah, clones are the gray area. Yeah. Uh, Zeus says in Malta, clones are not allowed, only seeds. And if they do address it, it's backwards as hell. That's so. So you could make seeds out of your four plans and provide seeds to other people, right? Because seeds are allowed. So sexual propagation is allowed. Asexual propagation is not allowed. If you grow that plant, break the branch off, root it, because it's going to root. And then you provide that clone to somebody else, that's not allowed. But if that plant, if your four plants make seeds, flower out, make seeds, and you provide those seeds to somebody else, that's okay. <laughs> it's it's backwards. It's like propagation's allowed or it's not because there's two forms of propagation. And if one's allowed, what makes the other one not allowed? What makes this one so unique? If propagation is allowed, it should just be allowed, both sexual and asexual propagation. That's what these regulators need to hear. See, even my dog agrees. He's like, fuck yeah. Jabord says, shh, don't tell him. Chocolate Bark says, I think it's nobody's business. That's the gray area, right? That's the lovely part about clones. It's like previous to the plant count, like things, some markets still have these plant count, like limitations in California for a while. Like the number 99 was like supposedly like the safe number. But even plant counts, man, I remember, I remember rolling around with, I remember uh, rolling around with hundreds of plants in the car, you know, and like, like it's just thinking in my head, like if they base it on plant count, I'm fucked, I'm fucked. Zeus says, in fact, I have a question about seeds. Don't know if you can help me by answering about it. Throw it, throw it out there, man. Come on, man. Zeus, you, Zeus out in Malta. You're, you're in this conversation. Let's do it. What do you got? I'll try to help. You know, if I don't know, we'll figure it out together. I think. Let's see here. That's my name too. Weird. See, Chocolate Bark says nobody's checking your house. Maybe your power and water bill. But if they're paid, I don't see it being anybody's government business. Just exercise responsibility. Hundred percent, and with a nursery, you're actually going to be like having nice and consistent, like usage on your electricity and water. It's often lower than a flowering room, so it's less suspicious in that sense. 
Justin Williams says, in the past five years, it went from an average of 250 to 300 an ounce. Nowadays, you grab zips anywhere from 50 to 80. Great for consumers, yes. Hard on the commercial industry. Yeah, I mean, it sounds rough. Um, like I said, I don't know what tickets. I mean, I've heard people getting like 18 to 2 out there for their for their units. I don't know, man. It's, it's crazy. It seems like everybody and their mother's growing and everybody and their mother's moving it. Um, but Hey, you know, it's, it's not unique to that market because even in California, you know, a thousand dollar pounds are, are normal. Um, 1200 or $1,500, like fantastic pounds at scale are normal and have been, you know, if anybody's getting two, they got really good relationships, really unique strains, you, uh, you know, high, high demand, low supply. And, you know, they're topping out at that, you know, number, I assume, you know, there's always outliers and stuff, but the market's definitely crashed big time too, to like, you know, yeah, you know, a thousand dollar pounds, <laughs> give or take, depends what you're working with, you know, there's all these other factors that determine the price of the pound. So there's, there's a little bit of everything in there. Bonfire, buenos dias, homie, buenos dias, como estamos? Como manicistas, si ¿qué onda con el, uh, con el problema que me mandaste? Yeah, was your trays the, the ones that were low on the plant counts? Um, bonfire? Santiago Cultiva desde Colombia dice, what do you think, what do you think about doing clones in the tropics? En el trópico, pues el trópico está húmedo y está calientito, que no? Está caliente y está húmedo. Mientras que no sube demasiado la temperatura, está perfecto para los, los clones en esa edad y ese paso de, de cultivación. So, en los trópicos es más, es, es, yo, es lo que yo digo a los demás clientes. Cuando entro al cuarto de vegetación, se debe de sentir como el, el verano, caliente, poquito húmedo, estás moviendo tu camisa, tu camisa, uh, debe de sentirse así, a, a tu piel y todo. No debe de sentirse frío, ni, 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 ni frío, ni, ni nada así. Debe de sentirse como un lugar trópico. So, yo digo que está bien, porque la vegetación, es, uh, sale, pues la vegetación, Está perfecto para ese trópico, para ese clima. Y para florecer es algo diferente. No, no quieres tanto ese trópico, pero si no estás floreciendo tus plantas, si solo estás haciendo los clones, pues yo digo es que está bien. Y si necesitas ayuda, ve a clonecoach.com y yo te ayudo. Yo te ayudo. Santiago Cultiva dice, muy bien, mi hermano. Stay rooted from Guam. Sending love. Guam, what time is it out there in Guam? We're doing these morning versions every Friday now, y'all. Cada viernes a las nueve y media, pues, uh, tiempo de Pacífico, donde yo estoy en California, voy a, estar, voy a estar haciendo estos lives. So, en la mañana y en la tarde también. So, los, los que están en otros países pueden um, unirse juntos en este tiempo y no andar... En la madrugada ahí en tu teléfono mirando y you no know, esperándote, y you no, know, lo, 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 lo aprecio mucho, pero ya estamos haciendo en la mañana para que lo puedas mirar durante el tarde en vez de la madrugada. Zeus says, Zeus 16 says, I pop five seeds to choose the four of them, but they all five popped. And they popped twins. Pop twins. I read that I have to remove the weakest. Pop twins. All five pop twins. Interesting. Um, are these feminized seeds, I assume? Uh, is there a chance that they will turn hermosa or hermaphrodites, I, I assume? I guess there was a F up in the genetics. We're going to find out. Is there a chance? Yes, there's a chance. There's a chance. Yeah. Things are irregular. Depends what the seeds are. Depends seed stock just like seeds just like clones their their genetic potential and their their possible risks stem from 
the the way they were bred and or handled prior like in the mother stage or in the you know the formation of genetics and everything could go wrong uh, are possible there so both you know both clones and seeds have the ability to have possibilities of things going wrong and or right it just depends on their how their how those genetics were, were made and handled and created and gotten to you at that point bonfire with the question of yeah we were, we were dming yesterday um he said yes sir they got back up was heavy like you said coach nice yeah dude that's that's something i'm adding for all those that haven't joined the clone coach team there's a couple things that you should know uh there's now a clone coach library of coaching calls so the coaching calls that i've recorded with other team members I have the full length uncut versions only available to clone coach team members um, uploaded um, as well. So I just uploaded a few more episodes or they're half hour plus long coaching calls. So they take a while to upload, but you have this coaching call library there. In addition to that, I'm building up a, a, a troubleshooting guide for all of these common troubleshooting concerns. And maybe it's a flow chart. Maybe it's just, you know, per, per, um, stage of rooting, something like that. But, you know, get to get the troubleshooting guide there as well. So if you haven't joined the clone coach team, you got multiple languages, you get a buy one, get one free, you get two, two different versions of languages, you get a troubleshooting guide, you get coaching call library. So you could listen to other, uh, other team members situations, and it could either trigger or answer questions that you may or may not have as well. And you could hear other people's experience that are on the same team as you. And this is only available for clone coach team members. So check it out. Bonfire CBD says, hell yeah. Tropical clones for the win. Yep. Yep. Let me catch up on the chat here. Santiago Cultiva says, si es más complejo con los cambios de humedad la floración. Muchísimas gracias, mi hermano. De nada. Placer. Como dicen, a tu servicio. No, como dicen. Como le dicen ya. Uh, a tu servicio, no. A la, a la orden. Let's see that Mexico too. Not sure. Bonfire C says the coach got you G. Nice. Exotic nurseries. What's going on? He's got a little insight on the Michigan market. We we're talking about the Michigan market earlier and how, um, at least apparently, the flower. You know, you know, the flower prices have, have dipped a lot, but. Um, Probably the the clone market. If you, the clone market's doing well, and and always. Clones could fetch all kinds of different prices, right? But the un, the consistency and the uniformity that is expected of a nursery is not always there with all these nursery providers. So if you're able to do that, and growers are able to rely on you whenever they place an order with it with notice, without notice, same day, no matter what, they place an order with you and the plants are uniform, consistent. They don't lose 20% off the top after transplant. You know, they're not dealing with any issues with the, un, you know, lack of a uniform canopy and they're having to bend and do all this extra plant work. Genetics that's, that are mixed up and aren't what they say they are. They don't have to deal with any of that. Trust they're going to come back to you. Repeat and referral business is the staple of a nursery business, in my opinion. Repeat clients, and they're going to refer other people because their friends are going to see what is going on in their nursery with their clones, their garden, their clones. Yeah, where'd you get those? And they say, I got a guy, and you're going to be that guy. Justin Williams says, what would be your best advice for nursing a clone that is not doing well upon delivery? Elaborate a bit more if you could, Justin. Any, any other bit of information would help, but... I need to know the clone's history and the, the, the state that it was day one. And then what's happened every day since. Then I could determine which of those inputs or, or variables are, are the biggest factor in what we're seeing. You know, and then obviously a, a, a snapshot of what, you know, that clone that is not doing well, what that not doing well actually looks like. What is actually happening, you know? 
Is it yellowing? Is it purpling? Is it lack of roots? Is it molding? Is it rotting? Is it wilting? Is it burned leaves? Is it lack of growth? Is it, is it stretch? Is it, what does not doing well look like to you? And then you can kind of help determine the best advice, you know, but yeah. All right. Let me catch up on this chat here. Rhode Island in the house. Yeah, Bonfire says, yeah, a la orden, si senor. Yep, that's that's the phrase I was looking for. Justin Dabb says, clones are cheap in Washington. How cheap? And how good are they? What do you get for what do you pay? Let me know, Justin. Let me know in the chat. Barrel Maker says, what's a good way to start? What's a good why to start selling clones? I assume way to start selling clones. Tell people you have clones. <laughs> Find anybody that grows weed that that has a home grow. If you're in a state that could do your legal four plants, your legal six plants, ask, talk to anybody that's interested in in having a grow. Go to your hydroponic store, put up a flyer, and let people know you have clones. You could always you always get one shot at a client at a customer. If you come through. And they're successful, they're calling you back. If your plants give them trouble and they're not successful, unlikely that they're calling you back. So how do you start selling clones? Just let everybody know. Right now, it's like, what an easier time because you could be open about it. When I was selling clones, you couldn't be op- that open about it. It had to be all medical and under this, you know, this, this layer. Now, you know. You could, you could offer anybody you could see and speak to that has a, as an adult and that has the ability to grow, say, Hey, do you want to grow your legal six plants? You want to start with one, one plant and, you know, grow them a little teen, not a clone, transplant that for them, get a, get a bigger form and provide that to them. Fucking A. And then just, just, and how, how do you do like the back end of it? Like that's the front of the end of it, right? Right, barrel maker, that's the front end. That's how you let people know you got clones. But how you like make the clones and do it on a consistent basis and uniform so you're providing the best fucking clones possible. There's a solution for you. It's on clonecoach.com. The clone coach SOPs. That's what I built up to, you know, from one tray to 50 trays, no matter what you're doing. Use the SOPs for your mother plants and your clones, and you can make the best clones ever every single time. You provide that to other people. That's a side hustle. That's, that's the side hustle, quote unquote, side hustle that allowed me to quit my previous career and pursue this career in the nursery space with clones. So if it worked for me, it might work for you. Results are not guaranteed. <laughs> Got to always throw the disclaimer in, right? Let's see here. Use that shite says best lights you prefer for clones. It's easy. Four foot strip lights, cool blue spectrum, LEDs, low wattage, two of them per four by two level covering four domes, six inch or so above the domes. That's the setup. Straightforward. But some people do really tall distance between the lights and the domes. I don't like to do that. Some people do um, T5s, either four bulb or eight bulb T5s. I don't like to do that. Um you know, other, other, other weird things, or like some like these, like razor, like dimmable led lights, like these like three strip led lights, but they're like su- more intense in the spectrum. I don't know. It's fuck. It's funky. Cause even turning those down, like it's hard to get that right spectrum for spectrum for those plants. So I don't even like those just s- simple four foot strip lights. Always, always do well for me. Green Smoker 6969 says, how do you make clones without using heat mats? It's easy. In my Clone Coach SOPs, there's not one heat mat mentioned. I don't use any heat mats. I never have. Not saying that it's not a usable tool and and beneficial in some, some instances. It is. If you're in a cold basement, drafty basement, or you're in a place with, with you know cold nighttime temperatures or something like that or in a greenhouse, yeah. You're going to want to keep your root zone warm um, during the propagation stage. So it's nece- it's it's good to have in some instances, but is it necessary? No. Assuming your room is at the right uh, environment protocols and like, you know, you don't have a 
your your tray of clones on a cold concrete floor or something, then you don't need uh, heat mats. And I, at least in the clone coach SOPs, you don't need heat mats. Certified is from Anguilla. Anguilla. Sean Lavertu says, I just transplanted my first two clones. New growth has started, but the top leaves have burnt brown tips. Do I need to top it? I'm concerned for nothing, or am I concerned for nothing? Well, the top leaves, the fan leaves, is that what you're referring to? That's what I assume. The fan leaves have burnt brown tips, usually like a phosphorus deficiency, um, like if they're dead and crispy and or, you know, a drastic change in humidity will do that. Um, but if you're saying, do I need to top it? Let's assume that they're, the nodes are not what's affected, Right. If the nodes are brown and mushy and that's what's affected and you're like, should I top it and just move down to the next two nodes? Then you have excess humidity and a lack of um, prevention against pathogens causing those nodes to brown and die out. So it's a fan leaves or nodes. But if it's fan leaves and the new nodes is growing, you can just wait till the new fan leaves um, develop after that and you just remove that. They'll become the bottoms and you remove that during the cleanup stage. Barrel Maker says, thank you. Great advice on the uh, on how to start selling clones. I pretty, you know, you're welcome. That's how, that's how I did it. That's how I would do it, you know. And Barrel Maker, if you're considering it, which you should, the best investment you can make in that little nursery side hustle, in my humble opinion, and the opinion of about a thousand other people just like you, is grab the Clone Coach SOPs. 297 and that that is your playbook that's going to get you to the to the touchdown to the end zone you know to the end zone so barrel maker check it out clonecoach.com thanks for thanks for the chat thanks for joining in the questions there yeah Let's see here let me catch up on this chat sean Lavertu says yes correct not the new nodes just the top fan leaves yeah was there a drastic change in the humidity um, from when you received it to where it is now, um, was it like a dry back period? Did like did, did, did it go into a really dry environment or something? Did it get really crispy? Um, if it's just a fa- couple fan leaves and the new growth is coming out fine, then that tells me the plant likes the new environment that it's in and what it's receiving. I let that play out, and old crispy fan leaves just become exactly that, old and crispy, and you get rid of them, and the new growth is you know, trumps those two fan leaves that started off crispy during the transplant stage and all is good. Move on. So as a little reminder, guys, going to be launching a clone coach podcast here shortly to start off with just going to be the audio versions of the clone questions live all 33 episodes um about 10 different interviews that i did that i've done as well and um from that that'll be the base and from that i'm gonna be building on top of it so just keep an eye out for that in the near future but we're also going to do a clone questions live tonight 5 30 pacific standard time as well this is the morning edition now we're doing this every friday morning too so Share this with your friends. Let, let other people know, people in different places. We got a lot of people joining from Colombia um, that are just, you know, it's better time zones for them, for people in other time zones, if we do a morning version too. So every Friday, we're going to do a morning version as well. We'll do the, the hippie breakfast, whatever that's called, the coffee and a joint, you know, and uh, every Friday now, y'all. And I appreciate everybody that's on here. You know, I appreciate the support, you know, and uh, like I said, if you could, if you gain anything out of it, just share. Share the profile. Tell someone that tell someone about Clone Coach. Let them make a decision from there. And if you're on the Clone Coach team, same thing. Tell someone about being on the Clone Coach team and what it's done for you and your honest experience uh, with with the program. And if you haven't joined the Clone Coach team, you know there's a lot of pieces of information out there, a lot of a lot of reference points for you to do your own digging on. Um, but if you're an employee, a manager, an owner-operator of a nursery, 
uh, an entrepreneur, right? Small little side hustle, something of a nursery. The clone coach SOPs are really made for you because that's what I was. That's what I, you know, started as a side hustle, entrepreneur, owner, operator, uh, employee, manager, you know, at all sales, rep, all these other different layers strictly in the nursery space. So if you're any of those, you know, avatars, the SOPs are for you. And you know, guys, especially with nowadays with where the economy is, like where the economy is, I like guess it makes me want to start throwing some clones out again, too. I haven't done clones in a while because of the market out here and like legalities and stuff. And But the way the, the way the economy is right now, it's like ripe time to start a side hustle uh, with the nursery. I got, uh, yeah, it's the ripe time. Take your four legal plans that you can, make them mothers, never flower them, get the clone coach SOPs, make clones, provide those clones to other people in your local area, and that side hustle is going to help you out with rising inflation, help you pay the bills, help you, help you with the groceries, help you, um, you know, get, get you that cushion and, 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 you know, get a little bit of a head, get a little head and it's enjoyable. Like it's, it's a great feeling providing healthy plants to other people and watching them succeed. It, it's, it's very, very satisfying. There's a lot, there's a lot of um, good energy coming from that. So it's a hell of a combination. <laughs> you know, that's, that's my opinion. What do you guys think? <sighs> Trevor, Trevor D. Jewelry says, what are you smoking on strain wise? connected it's some smalls they do like um like pheno hunt like additions this is a skittles cross with headband skittles cross with headband gassy kemi you know sean Lavertu says it was once i moved them to the tent from the dome i did harden them off thanks man Right on. Yeah, if they went from the tent to the tent from the dome and that happened, there's a big, there's more than like a ten percent change in in the environment. Most like most most likely. Louisiana cannabis says hello from the boot, Nolens, Nolens. I did a went I went on vacation to to New Orleans, and uh, great fucking food, great fucking. Uh, music and shit, the beignets, got caught in the rain, you know. A little dingy, dirty, kind of like just from the drinking and like the drinking areas, you know, like kind of Vegas, like drinking streets, dirty. Uh, maybe a little more so, but good fucking cool. Good fucking place. Louisiana, New Orleans. Let's see here. Cook Bean 17 says, what's your understanding about curling fan leaves? Depends on what the other situation is. Like if it's on like a mother plant, curling fan leaves on the outside ends usually heat. Um, if it's associated with, with dark, dark colors as well, it's usually uh, uh, um, too much nitrogen. If it's what other kind of fan curls, if it's really bad and it's like curled up, it's, you know, russet mites. Like paint the picture a bit more and then it'll tell you what's what's going on. Um, you know, we got to start with fan leaves and like, all right, what else is happening? Okay, what else is happening? All right, well, that's probably this, you know, it went the other way. It's something else. Let's see here. On clones, on clones. Once again, what stage of clones now? Like, that's the next stage, right? What stage of clones and what what did it, what happened before? What kind of a curl? What happened after? Let's see here. Let's see. Catch up on this chat here. Tabar says you got a question about Cal Ox and application rates. If you got a, if you got any questions on on that particularly, I don't know those dosage rates memorized, um, but reach out to any of the BioSafe uh, people on here on Instagram and. Uh, let them know clone coach sent you and they'll answer all of your, your, your questions there. 
Diego uh, Pinzon Arrota says, so you grow your own for personal smoke? I have. Um, I don't currently, but I definitely have for sure. I've had like even small tent and, you know, a couple lights, a few lights, uh, stuff like that. But currently I do not. I just, uh, I got a few friends that still have some lights going and, uh, I let them do their thing. And now we're touching on the pack prices earlier and the outside out, uh, prices earlier. I just get really cheap herb, <laughs> you know, and it's good. He's on vacation right now. So I had to pick up some other stuff, but Tabar says, is Kellogg's mixable with zero tall and oxyfos? I don't believe so. I don't believe so. Once again, reach out to those biosafe guys and confirm that. Morning Dew Canada says, how early do you top plants and how many times do you top? Sounds like you want to make some mother plants. If you do, grab the Clone Coach SOPs, the best mother plants ever. Guide is packaged in there and it has a full strategy on pruning, shaping, topping mother plants. Um, how early? Probably the first week. Um, if possible, no later than the second week. How often? As often as the plant will let me. So let's see here. We're catching up on the chat. But yeah, guys, we're getting close to the end here. It's been about an hour. It'll tell me by where my joint is. One joint's worth a joint and a coffee. Everybody just joining here at the end. This is the morning edition of Clone Questions Live. We're doing this every Friday morning now, 9.30 to 10.30 Pacific Standard Time. We're also doing a Clone Questions Live this evening, 5.30 Pacific Standard Time as well. We do a morning and an evening edition to just help people out in different time zones. Um, but, you know, share this with your friends. Share Clone Coach with your friends. Uh, and uh, join me tonight if you can. If you can't, join me next Friday. If you have any questions, you want to make the best clones ever, Go to clonecoach.com. It's nice and easy. Join a thousand other people just like you that are using the five-star rated Clone Coach SOPs to make the best clones ever in their nursery. But that's going to do it for me, guys. This is um, Clone Questions Live Morning Edition. And once again, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Thank you.